Thank you, everyone. Please have a seat. Uh, well, thank you, Sanjay. Uh, it is an honor to be with you today and follow President uh, Kikwete and President Bush uh, to Bono and uh, Alicia uh, to the One Campaign. Thank you for bringing us together. Uh, because of your work all across Africa, there are children who are no longer starving, mothers who are no longer dying of treatable diseases, fathers who are again pro providing for their families. And because of all of you, uh, so many people are now blessed with hope. Uh, we've got members of Congress who've done so much for this cause who are here today, and we want to thank them. Uh, let me also thank President Bush for joining us from uh, Tanzania and for his bold leadership on this issue. Uh, I believe that history will record the President's emergency plan for AIDS relief as uh, one of his greatest legacies. And that program, more ambitious than even, even leading advocates uh, thought was possible at the time, has saved thousands and thousands and thousands of lives and spurred international action and laid the foundation for a comprehensive global plan that will impact the lives of millions. And we are proud that we have the opportunity to carry that work forward. Today is a remarkable day. Today we come together as a global community across continents, across faiths and cultures to renew our commitment to ending the AIDS pandemic once and for all. Now, if you go back and you look at the themes of past World AIDS Days, if you read them one after another, you'll see the story of how the human race has confronted one of the most devastating pandemics in our history. You'll see that in those early years, when we started losing good men and women to a disease that no one truly understood, it was about ringing the alarm, calling for global action, proving that this deadly disease was not isolated to one area or one group of people. And that's part of what makes today so remarkable, because back in those early years, few could have imagined this day, that we would be looking ahead to the beginning of the end, marking a World AIDS Day that has gone from that early beginning when people were still uncertain to now a theme getting to zero. Few could have imagined that we'd be talking about the real possibility of an AIDS-free generation. But that's what we're talking about. That's why we're here. And we arrived here because of all of you and your unwavering belief that we can and we will beat this disease. Because we invested in antiretroviral anti treatment, people who would have died from AIDS, some of whom are here today, are living full and vibrant lives. Because we develop new tools, more and more mothers are giving birth to children free from this disease. And because of a persistent focus on awareness, the global rate of new infections and deaths is declining. So make no mistake, we are going to win this fight. But the fight's not over, not by a long shot. The rate of new infections may be going down elsewhere, but it's not going down here in America. The infection rate here has been holding steady for over a decade. There are communities in this country being devastated still by this disease. When new infections among young black gay men increased by nearly 50 percent in three years, we need to do more to show them that their lives matter. When Latinos are dying sooner than other groups, and when black women feel forgotten, even though they account for most of the new cases among women, then we've got to do more. So this fight is not over. Not for the 1.2 million Americans who are living with
access to drugs so that 200,000 babies could be born HIV-free. And nearly 13 million people have received care and treatment, including more than 4 million children. So we've got some stuff to be proud of, but we've got to do more. We're achieving these results not by acting alone, but by partnering with developing countries like Tanzania and with leaders like President Kikwete. Now, as we go forward, we've got to keep refining our strategy so that we're saving as many lives as possible. We need to listen when the scientific community focuses on prevention. That's why, as a matter of policy, we're now investing in what works, from medical procedures to promoting healthy behavior. And that's why we're setting a goal of providing antiretroviral drugs to more than one and a half million HIV-positive pregnant women over the next two years so that they have the chance to give birth to HIV-free babies. We're not going to stop there. We know that treatment is also prevention. And today, we're setting a new target of helping six million people get treatment by the end of 2013. That's two million more people than our original goal. And on, in, on this World AIDS Day, uh, here's my message to everybody who's out there. To the global community, we ask you to join us. Countries that have committed to the Global Fund need to give the money that they promised. Countries that haven't made a pledge, they need to do so. That includes, that includes countries that in the past might have been recipients, but now are in a position uh, to step up as major donors. Uh, China and other major economies are in a position now to transition uh, in a way that uh, can help more people. To Congress, keep working together uh, and keep the commitments you've made intact at a time when so much in Washington uh, divides us. The fight against this disease has united us across parties and across presidents, and it shows that we can do big things when Republicans and Democrats put their common humanity before politics. So we need to carry that spirit forward. And to all Americans, we've got to keep fighting. Fight for every person who needs our help today, but also fight for every person who didn't leave to see live to see this moment. For the Rock Hudsons and the Arthur Ashes and every person who woke us up to the reality of HIV AIDS. We've got to fight for Ryan White and his mother Jeannie, the Ray brothers, and every person who forced us to confront our destructive prejudices and our misguided fears. Fight for Magic Johnson and Mary Fisher and every man, woman, and child who when told they were going to die from this disease, they said, no, we're not. We're going to live. Keep fighting for all of them because we can end this pandemic. We can beat this disease. We can win this fight. We just have to keep at it, steady, persistent, today, tomorrow, every day, until we get to zero. And as long as I have the honor of being your president, that's what this administration is going to keep doing. That's my pledge. That's my commitment to all of you. And that's got to be our promise to each other. Because we've come so far and we've saved so many lives, we might as well finish the fight. Thank you for all you've done. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you.